at 6.03 p.m. on February 10th, Monday. Okay. Uh, the first thing on the agenda, I guess, is the Pledge. Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, oh Pledge. Welcome everybody. Okay. Go ahead and do a roll call. Roll call. All right. Commissioner Co. Here. Commissioner Ham. Here. Commissioner Jackson. Here. Commissioner Clett. Here. Commissioner Nicholas. Here. Chair Steinberger. Present. Oh, sorry, Vice Chair Steinberger, present, and Chair Buys. Here. And we do have a quorum. Excellent. All right. Get organized here. Uh, so new business. Oh, that's the agenda. wrong we're, one. We're approval. Approval, approval of agenda. agenda. That's where we're at. So a uh, call for a motion of acceptance of agenda for the meeting on, uh, what was that, January 21st? Well, that's no, the no, no, no. That's approval for this tonight's oh, agenda. Oh, this agenda. Yeah. Okay. All right. Consideration approval of this agenda for February 10th. I move that the Public Art Commission accept the agenda as presented. I second the motion. All right. Okay. Roll call. Commissioner Jackson. Yes. Yay. Commissioner Clett? Yes. Commissioner Nicholas? Yes. Vice Chair Steinberger? Yes. Chair Buys? Yes. Commissioner Coe? Yes. Commissioner Ham? Yes. Excellent. Uh, Next up is the approval of minutes. So a uh, call for a motion of acceptance of minutes from the meeting. And this is the one from January, correct? Yes. January 16th, 2020. I motion to approve the minutes from January 16th, 2020. I'll second the motion. All right, and okay. roll call. Commissioner Clett? Yes. Commissioner Nicholas? Yes. Vice Chair Steinberger? Yes. Chair Buys? Yes. Commissioner Coe? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Ham? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. And the motion passed. Fantastic. And uh, on our agenda this evening next is um, public hearings, which is the first, first time we've had this on our agenda in this committee, correct? Yeah, we don't have anything under public hearing tonight. Okay, just wanted to double check. Um, moving on then to old business, which is the presentation and discussion on the work plan. Okay, well, so this item we spoke about um, last month and we have a, a few components of a work plan, but we, we were asked to just do one component at a time. So in looking at getting prepared to have a full work plan or prepared to conduct business as a commission, there were a few things that um, I thought of, and, and obviously this is an opportunity for you guys to also pull in some ideas and, and discuss, but I thought what would be critical is that we conduct uh, an inventory and start a process or a formal process on how we can keep track of the public art that is in the community right now, and then as new ones come on, then we will add them to our inventory. Um, so as you can see, conduct inventory, and perhaps you know we can have um, each of the commissioners take up a an area and just go in and snap a picture or um, what I had 
had thought is that we could at the very least collect um, the location of the piece of art, a photograph of it, who was the artist, if that piece of art has some sort of name, when was it installed, and what type of medium is it? Is it, you know, I don't know, a, a mural versus, you know, some sort of, of piece. So um, those were just some ideas, and I figure seeing as, you know, this plan, we're going to be working through this for a couple months, is that, that I, I put these deadlines a little bit further out. It's not necessary that we have everything done immediately. So um, that was one idea. The next is to create the draft request for proposal, which we had briefly talked about the last meeting. You'll see on your um, desk there that I found three different options or three different samples of um, other communities that have done requests for qualifications. And I should have called that request for qualification and not proposal, I apologize, so I'm gonna fix that. But, um, so this again is um, used when we go to um, seek uh, an artist to do a piece of, of work. Mm -hmm. So if you'll notice that they all have some similarities as far as what they include in them. Um, basically where is the project and what makes an artist eligible, how much money we would have, um, maybe some preferences on um, timeline or preferences on, on art, like um, the medium or whatever, um, some requirements on what makes them uh, an eligible public artist to participate. Um, the timeline, uh, for example, we, we talk a lot about um, including having the public artist engage the community when they're working a project. So our timeline would not only um, list when we want the actual installation to be, but the process and, and how many meetings we want that person to have um, to engage the community to um, a timeline of maybe samples or drafts of what a piece of art might look like before it actually gets created so that not only the commission can look at it, the community has an opportunity to look at it, and then certainly um, you are a recommending body to the city council, so then ultimately, you know, what's the timeline of getting it before the city council, before this piece is actually created. Um, so those are some things that, that we want to um, include in our request for qualifications. So although I put on here that I would create sort of that draft sample um, that we can just adapt per project, um, I did say that um, I would also make sure I, I consult with any, <coughs> any of our legal stuff that we need to look at in order to do a project. And, and this would be specific for city projects, mm -hmm. projects that would go um, in, into city <coughs> parks or whatever. Um, certainly we would not be responsible for doing an RFQ for a project that is done at um, a commercial site for a private developer. They are responsible for theirs. Um, but they will at some point have to bring and get uh, approval and recommendation from you guys on their art. But we wouldn't be responsible for finding their artist. Um, so again, um, like I said, create a template for what this RFQ would look like in some uh, components. So I, I share these examples with you. The very last one, it doesn't say it on here, but it is, um, oh, it's from Oro Valley. But on page, at the bottom of their first page, it just says public art guidelines. It's the very basic one. Um, this is where it says call for artist process requirements. So although they didn't give me a sample of what one of theirs looks like, this just kind of outlines what it is that they like to see in theirs. So I, I give this to you as an opportunity to just think this over a little bit and, and think about um, what you specifically want to see in, in an RFQ. But I do have, um, I would propose that by August, I have this sample draft looking document before you um, 
and and I would like to be able to collect your ideas and incorporate them as we go along so that in August it will be complete and come before you for your final approval. So, um, you know, homework. Look this over, come up with some ideas, and, um, and then just let me know. Um, the next item is developing a list of, of ideas from other communities. We did ask that this I sort of item be placed on our agenda, which you'll see later on, so that each of you um, and, and myself as well, whenever you come across a, a public art project, to just share it with me so then I can sort of create um, a file of ideas so that we can re refer to them at a later time um, as things that we may like, things that may, we may want to incorporate or whatever. So that's why I put both um, you and me on here. Um, mine will certainly come from other people as well. Other staff members have often sent ideas over to me. So, um, so that's just kind of going to be an ongoing thing. That's never going to end. We're just always going to collect ideas. Um, so again, just create some sort of list of um, projects for inspiration. Then, hold on one second, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, the next one is to create some sort of donation policy. We do have in our ordinance some, some basic criteria for donations, um, but this would just be more detailed to help us keep um, focused on what it is that we want to do when it comes to donations. And um, that um, is a little bit longer of a process because I think that's going to take a lot more um, sort of research on other communities and how they have handled that situation before. So again, this would be creating a process for how we would accept donations um, when it comes to, like if a commercial property installs their piece of art and a few years down the line they want to gift it to the city, there is a process for that. Um, but then also if an artist says, hey, I have a piece of art that I would like to give to the city, what's the process for that? So um, mostly um, in that, and this is just me on the side, you might have other ideas, but I'm thinking maintenance and, and the condition that it's in when they want to donate it to us. So those are things that we'll want to include in a policy. And then the final one is just simply the creation of this work plan and the adoption of it. Um, so did anyone have any other ideas of things that we, we might want to, uh, this prepare section is mostly just kind of assembling things, assembling ideas, assembling stuff so that when we move on, as we move along, we have our, our core stuff in line. I have a question for you, yes. Heather. We had a kachina that was donated. Mm -hmm. What was the policy when the city accepted that? Did you have a policy already or was there okay. any specific guidelines that you used to accept that? Um, thank you, <coughs> Vice Chair Steinberger. Um, there was no policy and is no policy in place for that. Okay. That was just um, a, a, the artist had approached uh, the city and wanted to do something like that, which was great. Um, but that's, it's not always, and he made it new. So, I mean, it was a new product. And it's not always going to be that way. It could be something that is 10 years old or whatever. So, which is why I said maintenance and, and its condition are important. But... Um, we also got this, um, the, the Lost Dutchman in the borough, mm -hmm. given to us some years back as well. And we don't want to be in a position where it's just somebody comes to us and says, hey, would you like this piece of art? And be like, I don't know. Where are we going to put it? What are we going to do? So we kind of want to have a, you know, a little bit of a plan in place to, to figure out if it's something that we do want. So, so one, uh, one thought I had in regards to the inventory um, which it's, I think it's a great idea to conduct what's there. Um, but another aspect to it might be potential locations for yeah. new sites. For new sites. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Are we going to maintain an artist database so that we know who these uh, requests for qualifications go out to? We're going to have a, a place like Cafe that we post them on so that people have access to them if they want to submit. 
You can add that as well. Absolutely. Oh, what happened? Can you see my weird typo there? <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. Keep, now. keep it going. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And then uh, artist database. Add that down here. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, even right now, if, if you are aware of public artists, we can start creating that database. There are outlets and venues that we would go to to help get the, our RFQ out there, but it wouldn't hurt to have our own little database started and, and, and work up those relationships as well. So, you, you've, you've identified the transfer of ownership as far as donation. What about donations that are not transferred of ownership, but they're on loan? Do we consider those? Do we need to have a policy for that? We can. Yeah. Um, okay, so create a donation slash loan, loan policy. policy. Yeah. Do we even want to do that? I don't know. Right. You know, I have no idea. But Absolutely. You know, there may be, like, for example, you know, maybe in the multi-generational center, they're going to want to have you know, an outlet that can rotate right. okay, uh, things or whatever. Absolutely. Um, we, I think we should have we might want some to kind of thought in there. In doing it with other, other communities. Yeah. yeah, where yeah. we yeah. rotate yeah. Perfect. pieces. Yeah. Okay. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Especially for installation, temporary things yeah. that mm -hmm. keep it fresh. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Anything else? I'm, I'm always available for you to email me with your ideas. So I don't, I don't want it to seem like this is the only time that you can suggest anything. So. My email is always working. All right. Yeah. And then in terms of a, so I think you had the date as July 30th for the inventory, which seems, um, is that correct? Was that taken yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of putting a action plan together on how we're going to survey that, um, I don't know if there's any ideas from the uh, committee here. <coughs> Do we want to? As far as how we can break up, right. maybe, you know, like areas, if you go and survey an area and find it, is that what you mean? Exactly. Okay. Or, yeah. um, or we can talk, or maybe come talk to Heather offline and uh, okay. put that plan together can, for next yeah, time. Yeah, we can do that. Just add a little note here. I have to write things mm -hmm. down. Okay. So, excuse me. Uh, do we, is there any place in the city where the public art is listed? Or is it just, we're going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> we will do that. And actually, that's something that I've listed on one of the other categories um, okay. is like to the, put together, whether it be print material or put something on our website so that we can be able to market ourselves and say we do have some public art here and people can come and look at our website and, and be able to use a GIS map to pinpoint where all of our pieces of art are. Okay. And I know we're not a huge city, but I would encourage, I guess, volunteers from outside of the committee here to perhaps help us with that effort as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, to go walk around outside. One question I was actually starting to think of on the uh, inventory. Um, are we going to come up with a way to uh, determine what is considered public art versus what is considered uh, art that is in a private location but is open to the public? Kind of like, say, sometimes Walmarts will do like some kind of painting or something or display with their products. How do, are we going to come up with a way to determine like that's not necessarily the art that we have in like versus the kachina which <coughs> is obviously a public structure okay so in our ordinance when it comes to the collection of the um, public art percent for for the developers that they have to contribute a certain percentage if it is say it's an office building that has an enclosed corridor in our ordinance, it does specify that public art has to be visible to the public um, for a minimum number of hours in, in a week, like 40 hours. So if it was an enclosed corridor, but they have a little um, 
whatever you want to call it, atrium, but that corridor is open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, they could put their art there. It would be preferable to be outside so we can everybody can see it at all times. So that is uh, defined in our ordinance of what public art is, is okay. considered. Okay. I, I th another idea I've been thinking about is a um, theme about where we are in a sense of place. And uh, I think that we can work with that very easily on uh, public art, mm -hmm. art that we send out mm -hmm. and request uh, artists to send in things. But when it comes to developers, how much control, you know, I mean, there's some things that I think are more appropriate mm -hmm. to hear. And I don't want to limit us completely, but in a way I do. You know, I, you know what I'm saying? I know what you mean, Ann. You want to be sensitive to culture. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about was with the Kachina, you know, he was, there may, may have been, I mean, when I thought about it and put myself in other people's shoes, that Kachinas are a religious symbol to, pe to, other, to Native Americans. Could some people have been offended? You know, they were taking it the wrong way or, you know, all these kinds of yeah. things are out there. So being sensitive to your cultural surroundings, your, um, our goals of Apache Junction being the kind of town that we want to be, the Southwest, I think some of those guidelines might be helpful. Absolutely. I you think you want some crazy something that's so modern that it doesn't fit in with a landscape and be, goes right. the other way. Rather than enhancing our public, it, it becomes something that people end up joking about or something either. You mean no yeah. George Jetson spaceships? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know people might really like that. Like, again, you don't want to limit yourself, but you do want to take those things into consideration so that when people, you know, some people might step up and say things, so then we can say, well, you know, this is how we consider. Well, I think, I think we cover that guidelines. because Heather mentioned in the yeah. guidelines that they would have meetings with the public when they were developing the right. art. So there you're covering that right there. Yeah. The other thing is the final approval for it will come through this committee. Yes. That's yeah. true too. So yeah, that will protect us, I think, in those instances. Yeah. But uh, in answer to your question about flying saucers, <laughs> a lot of people I met here when I first came to Apache Junction believed that there were flying saucers here. And it might be someplace in a very humorous way yeah, that where we could find, you know, soul. and they all wore. Because it relates. Tin foil. Tin, tin foil. Hats. Yeah. Aluminum <laughs> foil over their head. Well, we do have in another section of the plan um, an area where I had did, did identify doing some sort of guiding principles. Yeah. So it would address sensitivity and it would address um, materials and, and things like that. Something a little bit more just to help guide us. Not something that we're going to be so strict and on, but just something to help guide us a little bit more. Great. Great. Okay. All right. Um, so I think that concludes old business. Uh, we'll keep that as an agenda item moving forward yep. to continue working on the plan, um, future meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, so on a new business, um, the next item, presentation, discussion, and vote on the Centennial logo to be used until the Founders Day celebration on August 22nd, 2022. Mm -hmm. oh. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Um, okay, so uh, my name is Braden Biggs. For those who don't know, I am the chairperson uh, for the Apache Junction Founders Centennial Committee. Um, we've got uh, Phyllis DeSalva, who is our, our secretary. <coughs> we've got two members, Dirk and Karen, in the back. And then behind me is Heidi from the chamber, um, who has been instrumental in helping us uh, get this far. Um, so uh, what we're doing tonight is I'll, I'll kind of run through uh, some of our history over the last uh, almost year uh, time frame, and then uh, I, I think this is, their, is this not their first 
I don't want to say big real decision, but big real decision. Yeah. <laughs> decision of, of impact in the community, maybe. This will be our first motion, I guess. The, the first of a, motion. Of approval. Okay, <laughs> well, we're, we're proud to have the honor. Um, do I not, am I not controlling? Or do um, you? you should be able to with the. Okay, cool. Um, so just to kind of give you guys, give you guys a, a, bit, a bit of history, um, we started this committee actually back in April of 2019. Um, we are a subcommittee of the Apache Junction Focal Point and Tourism Committee. Um, we meet the first Thursday of every month at the public library uh, at 6 p.m. and then the Focal Point and Tourism Committee meets the second Tuesday of every month at the Chamber of Commerce. So their meeting is tomorrow at 10? 1030. Um, so between those two groups, we've been the ones that have been uh, really spearheading the uh, the Founder Centennial uh, uh, year celebration, um, which kind of brings us to those, uh, what we're doing and those planning of those events. Um, so the Centennial, the actual day is going to be on August 21st of 2022. Um, so our plan is to celebrate through a, throughout all of the community through a year long uh, a series of events and tying that into all of the various community events that are happening. So like Last Dutchman Days will be themed uh, to match the 100 year centennial, um, various uh, you know movie nights in the park that happen, our business community to try to tie those in, our nonprofit events, um, schools, uh, basically anything that's going on in the community uh, in the year of 2022 will be themed whatever we decide the theme is going to be. We haven't quite gotten there yet. The first step was our logo, which we're talking about tonight. So um, as a committee, we wanted to create a logo because with that logo, that allows us to brand, that allows us to market, um, gives a sense of identity to, to our group and a sense of identity to the community for that year-long celebration. Um, we put out a logo competition in August of 2019, uh, which ran until December the 31st. Um, the Apache Junction Chamber handled all submittals and turned them in to our committee completely anonymously. So um, we actually, uh, I believe we received 14 uh, submissions from the community or even potentially outside the community. Um, I do know we had some kids that submitted things, some adults, some seniors. Um, like I said, some people who lived here and some people who, who did not. But as far as um, who those, those uh, submissions were from, uh, we do not know. Heidi is the only one that knows that. Um, so uh, what we've been able to do from that is our committee, um, Greg Davis, who's one of our committee members and actually from the Superstition Mountain Historical Society, um, has donated $500 as a cash prize. So the winner, which you guys will be selecting tonight, um, will actually be awarded that $500 cash prize and the bragging rights for the next two years of being able to say that their logo was the city's, uh, was the community's centennial logo. Um, so a, a brief rundown of the rules here. I know that's a lot of information, um, but a, a separate entry form was required uh, for each submission. Um, each applicant was allowed only three entries per person. Um, all submitted work must have been original work and entrant, uh, of the entrance and must not include, be based on, or derived from any pre-existing or third-party designs, trademarks, or copyrighted images. Um, that really comes into play when we're talking about like the, the Dutchman, for instance, that that's actually owned by a lot of uh, various groups. Um, so it's really important that if they were to use that, that it has to be their own version of, of the Dutchman. Um, all entries uh, will, be, uh, will become the property of the Centennial Committee. So by submitting an entry, each entrant agreed that it was uh, that any and all intellectual property rights in the logo designed were deemed assigned to us. Um, the Centennial Committee does reserve the right to modify the winning logos to better fit the needs of, of the commemoration. Um, and the select winner must submit an original scalable version of the winning design so that it must be adaptable to electronic print media, to reproduction on small and large surfaces, and to use both in color and in grayscale. Um, so our selection criteria was based off of these three things. It was relevant, so does the entry align with the theme and the goals of the Centennial Committee? Um, originality, does the composition exhibit original design, creativity, and imagination? And then, of course, aesthetic quality. So um, does the submission command attention? Does it display visual balance and color coordination? And do all of the elements work together to create a unified and appealing design? 
Um, a couple of things to note. Uh, so this logo will be used on all of our marketing material for the next two years in matters pertaining to the focal, uh, the Founder Centennial Committee. Um, <clears throat> that does include social media, print materials, t-shirts, banners, et cetera. Um, whatever and wherever we can place this logo, we're gonna do it. Uh, so the entries and how we move forward. Um, so the Founder Centennial Committee determined after great debate that we would be the first round of judges on all of the logos that were submitted. Um, we would then go ahead and narrow it down to no more than five finalists, depending on how many re we received. Um, and then we would seek to task you all as the newly formed Arts Commission with the job of uh, selecting the winning logo. So um, we got all of our submissions. Uh, like I said, all of them were due December 31st. Um, we we then met January 9th, um, once we all got back from the holidays. Uh, there were 10 members that were present there um, from our entire organization, different agencies. Um, we had members of city council, so a, a wide range of, of presence there. Um, and we were all uh, there to help narrow down those logos. So we had 14 logos and we narrowed it down to the winning five. Um, which you will see here in a minute. But before I show you the logos, do you have any questions on what we've covered this far? I do. Okay. Okay, so you said that uh, sometimes kids had <laughs> perhaps submitted a logo, and let's say you chose one of them as one of the five. You said that one of the requirements is, is that they're now going to have to provide basically a professional, scalable version of that logo. Correct. Is a, is a youth going to be able to do that, number one? And... Uh, is, so is that still really a requirement? Are you still requiring that? It is still a requirement, and based off of the logos that were chosen, I okay. do not believe that that would you be an issue. You don't see it as an issue. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and, and that was something we talked about um, in, in the original 14, but I don't believe that that will be an issue based off of the five that were inevitably chosen. So then you also stipulated that you may decide you wanted to change the logo to better fit whatever it is, now, are they going to be responsible to make that change in the final version, or are you going to do that? We have some things to discuss <laughs> on that as well. I'm uh -huh. waiting to, I want to answer that question, but I want to see what your guys' initial thoughts on okay. that first are. Okay. Um, because the committee had some initial thoughts, and if they align, then we need to go back and kind of discuss those. Yeah. Um, but, so hold off on that part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so the five winning logos are submitted here. Um, these are the five that were chosen out of the 14, um, and we will go through these each one individually, but this just kind of gives you an idea of what each one of those logos look like. So I'll give you a second, and then we will actually work through these one by one. Can I ask you one quick question? Of course. Um, so you mentioned scalable. I imagine this is going to be everything from the header on an eight and a half uh, by 11 sheet of paper, what's like the largest scale that you're thinking? Banner size? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's unknown at this it's point. It's unlimited. Yeah. I, don't know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if I can find somebody to Bill, skywrite the thing, I mean, I'm all for it. Yeah. Like, you know. Um, no, it, Just to try it, to give some perspective. <laughs> that is all. Um, it, yeah, we, we're not sure yet. We've been talking about different ways to market. I mean, and, you know, with, with our different events and things, it'll depend on banner size. That's going to be a big yeah. thing. Um, we're going to have to work with each one of those artists and make sure that, like I said, based off of these five logos, I'm pretty sure these were done in some form of a professional software where we can look at that as as an option um, we very well may be limited I'm not going to say that the wall behind you is going to have the logo but you know we'll have to deal with that as as it comes so okay so this is logo number one what? and I guess we can kind of go about this in a couple different ways we can either walk through these and you guys can give your opinions as we go through them, or we can show you each one individually and give your opinion after the fact. Because we do have five, I'd recommend maybe just a couple of minutes on each one for comment, mm -hmm. and then we'll circle mm -hmm. back around. Mm -hmm. I agree. Legendary and inspiring, is that something that's already used in our um, printed media? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. I think the official city slogan is relates to legends. Yes. Surrounded by legends. legends. 
There you go. Surrounded, or surrounded by surrounded legends. By surrounded legends. By, surrounded by, by legends. That's right. Um, so a couple things, and, and I know it's hard to see. We actually realized this as we blew it up in the meeting. Um, the the little gray blob in the middle of, of the yeah. mountain on, on the right-hand yeah. side, it's it's actually the... the Panther the, shadow. The, yeah, mm -hmm. the shadow for mm -hmm. the mountain lion that's jumping out there. If you yeah. zoom in on it, it looks really clear, and you can see that, but that took mm -hmm. us a little while. Um, so then, of course, you have uh, the mountain there um, right underneath the mountain on the bottom left hand side we believe that that's the chamber it's what we can figure out it looks like mm -hmm. the chamber of mm -hmm. commerce mm -hmm. um, then of course you have um, the the church there um, and then the stables from the museum um, and then beneath that the multi-gen center so uh, it incorporates a, a few different businesses and things and then it's in a in a timepiece watch so um, there's mm -hmm. that Any other thoughts on that? All right, I'm gonna jump in. Um, I think that as a logo, I think it's adorable. I think it represents a lot of great things. Um, it's, it's whimsical, it's cute. <clears throat> Reproduction-wise and working in graphics, it's, the lines are weak. It's weak, it's not graphics enough in that your mind's eye just looks at it and goes, bam, identify. And if you're looking for something that we're branding with, that's what you need. It all, we also are looking mm -hmm. potentially at having it on hats, t-shirts, mm -hmm. things like that, that are reproducible. That fine line, it can get lost. I, 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 of all of them, I just feel that it's the weakest, I'm sorry to say. Yeah. If that sounds too negative, I'm trying to be constructive. <laughs> yeah. the, the issue I see with this one is the scalable issue. Because you're, you pointed out the, the gray blob that's supposed to be the uh, mountain lion shadow. <laughs> it's really hard to see that, and I'm imagining that if it gets blown up, it's going to be still just as hard to tell. It doesn't, it's not a very defined <coughs> piece of the image, and I feel it's going to look really out of place as a logo. Well, you mentioned that you have the right to change it. Correct. Mm -hmm. When you discuss this, mm -hmm. how would you change it? So that kind of goes back to uh, Commissioner Jackson's question. Um, mm -hmm. We as a committee feel that the artist submitted a design. It's the artist's design. Mm -hmm. um, so if we go in and ask the artist, well, we don't like this, and we don't like this, mm -hmm. and will you change this and move this, and, and it, at, at what point does it no longer become the artist's design and it That's becomes right. the committee's? Um, so when, we, when, when discussing uh, any potential changes, it would not be changes to the art itself. It would be like adding something that might be missing um, or taking uh, the, the legendary and inspiring, maybe changing those words to surrounded by legends or something along that line so it's not, we're not intruding on the artist's okay. vision. And then also just the functionality of yeah, making it scalable, correct. essentially. Right. Functionality so. is a good word, yeah. <clears throat> so I think, any other comments yeah. on one? Does, uh, does the artist provide uh, explanation on things? Uh, as far as in... So I wonder, like, do the 16 lines represent something on the stock <laughs> or... Um, they do not. Just lines, okay. <laughs> Mr. Chair? Yeah. Yes, sir. Just for open meeting law purposes and the flow of the meeting, each member should probably ask if they can speak. Okay. So they should address the address you first to get uh, the floor. All right. Let's get into those Roberts rules. So just may and I speak? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Simple chairman, chairman <laughs> bias, and I'll acknowledge I'm afraid uh, the to tell speaker. you no, Anne. <laughs> but just green light. to keep things moving. Say no. I'm not sure I understand. So when I want to talk, I need... To say I think in the, in uh, just to keep kind of order and make sure that we can. May I speak? Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, I, I, Anne. Yeah. The floor is yours. No, <laughs> I, I've said. I've said. <laughs> okay. Um, excellent. Well, I, I think that there is a lot of good detail on this one. I'm excited to see what comments we have on the next. Okay. I call this your. So um, this one uh, was intentionally submitted uh, in grayscale with the artist agreeing to work with the committee on a color palette. Uh, that was one of their questions is did we have a color palette and we currently did not because 
we did not think about it, to be honest. Um, so the artist uh, was fortunate, and that actually was, if you remember, one of the criteria um, to be able to submit a, a design in not only a colored version, but a, a grayscale version um, if needed. So um, they chose to submit this one in grayscale, and they will work with the committee on creating a color palette. Um, and of course, we are open to suggestions on what you would like to see for colors. Mm. May I speak? <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, if I were going to see colors on this, I'd like to see the colors of the Arizona state flag because mm -hmm. that is the background, but it could end up obviously dominating the whole, mm -hmm. whole piece. Um, we'd have to work with the artist mm -hmm. on this. And, and that was something that was discussed too, and we talked about possible muted colors and you know more something along that line. Yeah. So you still get that, but it's not as bright and vibrant as our as our reds and yellows. I, you know, it really says it all. Now, are those arrows in in the? Mm -hmm. They are in the border. They are yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, and those are appropriate because this was Apache country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and they were hunter gatherers. You mentioned that the Dutchman was a trademarked. That is an okay Dutchman. I was just going to mention that. <laughs> okay. So, y'all, those have been vetted for each of these designs at, already? As much as we can vet them without knowing <coughs> who exactly has ownerships to which Dutchman, but from what we can tell, based off of the wealth of brain power in our committee, we know that that's, a, that's an original Dutchman, or an original interpretation of the Dutchman, rather. May I critique? The floor is yours, Commissioner uh, Klett. I like this one um, for, for the reasons, again, <clears throat> at the background, how you can bring it forward or backward in the geometric shapes and have that flag back there. Again, it's really identifiable. It's easy for the eye. Um, the 100 is a little bit wedged in there a little bit somehow, but I like, it's, it's very clear what it is, Founder's Day. Um, I really like the Dutchman because he, also his silhouette is nice and sharp. Your eye gets those symbolisms, when is it? It's right there. Um, those fonts and things are easy for, to produce. They're well seen, whether they're small, functionality is really good or large. Uh, I could see that as a sticker on a car. Again, it's a strong, what we think of when we're looking for a logo. Um, I think it's got a lot of punch. Hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Question. Um, so she brought up fonts, and actually that was my question. So are, are we then planning on, so this one has a st single font. Are we planning on using that, the font, whatever is in the logo, on all medium then that relates to the centennial? That I do not know, actually. Okay. Um, that is, again, a good question. I okay. guess it would depend on what that specific font is and if okay. it is available for other opportunity. Okay. It would be a great way to continue the flow. It's a nice way to tie things in, but right. you, you, you have to decide whether you really want to if it's one that you want to use. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And is the, the celebration, this is celebrating the day, but and obviously everything is building to yeah. the day, but the intent of the celebration is to be throughout the year, right? Correct, yes. So even up past, well, past August 21st, uh, there will be, so basically from January 1 of 2022 to December 31 of 2022, there will be celebration of Apache Junction's founding. And, and it's important to note that this is not the city's founding. It's not the city of Apache Junction's founding um, because that will be celebrated a few years later and that's actually the, the golden jubilee of, of our 50 years. Um, this is the founding of the area when George Cleveland Curtis came here and actually settled what is now known as Apache Junction or the Apache Junction area. All right. Any additional comments? Well, to be honest, it's, it says it, but it's not knocking my socks off, you know what I mean? I mean, I'd like to see something, even the font or anything, maybe color would help, but it's, it's just too simple. 
yeah, I'd be curious to see what colors were, were selected, but I think mm -hmm. we have to judge it off the criteria that's been mm -hmm. submitted. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. mm -hmm. um, yep. And if this is the winning logo that you all choose, I mean, please, we, we are open to suggestions yeah. on colors. And once I think we identify the artist, then it's easier to kind of work with them and, and know what we are all looking to do, so. I do appreciate the attention they put into, you know, the creating kind of a focal point around the word day, getting the slight arch, centering it with the, with the star, um, just to add a little mm -hmm. bit of a focal point in the middle there, but great. Well, uh, I think we're ready to see logo three, unless there's any additional comments. Uh, I have one additional comment. Oh, go ahead. Advise. Um, the only issue I'm really having with this one and ever since Commissioner Collette pointed it out, it's just been, my eyes been drawn to it and it's this 100 at the top. It's just so squished that it's really just the, starting to really throw me off on this one. Yeah. And I mean, if we do choose this one, I would like to see us possibly try to at least make it a little less squished and more like a 100 and, or at least just- Prove the legibility. Yeah, a little more balanced. I can even add to, the, like, see how the 1922 to the 2022 breaks out of the triangle? Mm -hmm. The 100 could break out up top, and that could still be that balance. And then it wouldn't, the triangle holds everything in quite a bit with a diamond shape. Yeah. It, it does, that might be kind of what's bothering Anne, too. It's, the, the lettering is really bold. Love the little Dutchman, love the donkey ears. He's a good representation of a donkey. I'm biased, um, <laughs> <laughs> you think. But yeah, the, yeah, it's, a, it's still it's a strong and design and if you use your imagination on the color, I'd love to um, I think it could be quite nice. Well, yep. excuse me, but you can't use your imagination on the color of the Arizona flag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is the Arizona flag. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. If you picture what it would look like okay. with the flag in behind in some kind of a half tone or something like that. Yeah. And, and that, do keep I can see how that you Yeah, know, and, and do keep in mind for changes like that hundred the, the hundred up at the top. Yeah. Um, because we don't want to change the artist's rendering. Right. I mean we do have the option to go back to the artist and say this is yeah. suggested. Would you be willing to do it? If they say yes, great. If they say no, it's really their design mm -hmm. even though we still kind of own it. But I I would be very hesitant and I think so would the com the, the committee to just do it without mm -hmm. their permission. It's it's really their representation. Right. If I was yeah. the artist, the way I'm looking at it is you throw all that <clears throat> stuff out there, there's this, that, but if other certain people are going to feel different ways about things you look at those elements, like um, the chairman was, was saying that, you know, functionality, certain things of color, can you see it, how reproducible, those kinds of things are, right. are important. It's a nice little design. Wonderful. Okay. Well, on to logo number three then. Um, again, this was submitted in grayscale with the artist agreeing to work with the committee on a color palette. Um, and I noticed this this morning, the line at the very bottom underneath all of the logo, that's not actually a yeah. part of the logo, it's just the, the crop of the picture. Um, so please ignore the line. Excuse me, what is that figure between the two arrows? You know? I do not know. It looks like a little clip art, Native American, not quite a coke. Coca Pelli, but a little, some little dancer guy. Well, that's probably. And while I have the floor, I really like this one too, but have you seen Superior's logo? I have not, no. Really similar. And I really love the retro of this. It's, it's fun, um, but it, I, that might just be consideration that you might want to look at. Thanks, Commissioner Clett. Uh, additional thoughts? Takes advantage of the use of fonts again, really kind of relying on it to make its impact. Um, focusing on the day rather than uh, the year, focusing which I guess is take that, out, take it or leave it. But. Uh, per permission out of the floor. Yeah. So um, the, the critique I ha 
have on this one is another attention to detail, and it's just, it's th these lines here at the top with the star where it's supposed to be, I'm assuming it's supposed to be a representation of the flag, mm -hmm. but it's just th the lack of balance between them and on the uh, left-hand side, it seems like there's more uh, stripes than the uh, right-hand side, and it just feels like an off-balance. Right, it's not, uh, you, I think you're correct there, it's not symmetrical, mm -hmm. doesn't have equal angles throughout. It's a little um, distorted based on the proportion to, if it, you know, relative to like the Arizona flag, mm -hmm. like uh, Commissioner Coe was saying. But otherwise, I, I think it's a good one. The retro feel was fun. Excellent. Uh, I guess we'll move on to logo four. And then this is logo four, so. And does this have a color alternative? It does not. Hmm. Um, may I have the floor? Now I'm a little confused because we just looked at two logos that said Founders Day on them, and now we're ignoring Founders Day and we're just going to the centennial. Was that, did you, have you, has the committee actually made a decision on that? Are we gonna call the event Founders Day or are we gonna celebrate it as just the centennial? I'm, I'm, we're seeing two different things as far as the theme of these logos. Right, so we are the founding, the Founders Centennial Committee. Um, we actually, when we started this back in April of, of 2019, we were the Founders Day Centennial, it, it got too long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it got too long. Um, so we, we have now since then changed that to the Founders Centennial Committee. Um, I think with either, I, I mean, that's something that might be able to be adjusted simply if it's a wording choice like that. Um, actually, I don't recall, did that come up in our meeting? I don't, it, no, not that, spe not that specific one. So um, that's a new point that I don't think any, the, the 10 of us realized. So to clarify, Founders Day is an event within the year celebrating the centennial. Yeah. Correct, we will be doing a grand event in or around Founders Day, which is August 21 of 2022. There will be some major form of celebration that ties it all together, um, but it is really a year-long celebration of events. So I guess the, for me at least, one of the considerations is, are we trying to energize towards the celebration of Founders Day, or are we trying to create something, or not create, but uh, include something that is usable throughout the year? That I is, think that's, that's, that is an excellent question, and I look forward to seeing you at the next meeting to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you celebrate? Excellent. Uh, any additional thoughts? Well, saying celebrate cent centennial certainly gives you a large space of time. It doesn't say Founders Day which limits you to the August date. So, and I like the fact that there's different fonts. It's a little more, yeah. and, and the mountain is, looks like the mountain. I mean, it has the mm -hmm. shadows, it has the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's recognizable. It's, sorry, I didn't ask. <laughs> we're, we're learning again overall for the design taking away from what it says um, again it's a very strong easy to reproduce design I liked what Ian said there's a nice play with the two different fonts the celebrate the word itself and that font is a little more elegant um, and has some movement to it whereas the others were very strong and static and solid um, again, are we, what are we looking at? Founders Day, what, whichever thing should be the most prominent. I think we should have some consistency in that. The 100 is real obvious as that. It's nice the way they use that as a backdrop and have the negative. Um, so overall, it's a strong design in that way, I think. 
Well, one thing I'm thinking about, may I speak? Yes. <laughs> one thing I'm thinking about is, is the Superstition Mountains. I mean, granted, we're celebrating Apache Junction, mm. but it is, this place is about that mountain. Mm -hmm. And somewhere, I want to see just, even if it's small, that it, re, it, besides just the picture, I mean, how many people would know that, is, is to have something, because that's what draws people here. Mm -hmm. uh, good point, Anne. You know, somehow, that's, it's got to be there, in my opinion. It's something that tells us a little bit more, but you can't get too crowded. Right. So good luck. Yeah. I'm glad I wasn't the artist doing this. <laughs> That's all I have yeah. to say. And yeah. something that did that that reminded me with this specific image and really all of them, um, when we talk about putting it on on marketing material and T-shirts and things mm -hmm. like that, I mean, this is definitely something we want on T-shirts. So um, we have to be very careful with the color of the T-shirt that you put this on. I mean, you know, we mm -hmm. can't put this on a black T-shirt because it won't right. show up. Um, so we, we are just going to have to watch that very carefully with all of our logos so that yep. they don't blend into the T-shirt mm -hmm. or, or the backdrop mm -hmm. of, of whatever it's printed on. So. Uh, speaking of marketing material, materials, I'm curious what y'all's target audience is. Is it, I mean, everyone in Apache Junction, obviously, but it, will there be an effort to bring people to Apache Junction from neighboring communities for this? Absolutely. Um, the, the goal overall, because this is such a large celebration, um, Queen Creek is actually doing in the middle of their centennial right now. Um, there, there are a lot of communities that happen um, that it would be wonderful during the, the the big celebration at some point if we have representation from a statewide level coming out and celebrating our community and, and things along that line. So yes, uh, anybody and everybody is welcome. So I think the symbolism of the mountain really lends itself mm. to yeah. mm -hmm. anyone I mean, who can see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it yeah, having the mountain. Riding and, you know, Sorry, all sorts Michelle, of go ahead. around the mountain, hiking. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Klett. I think you guys said it all about the mountain. I agree. And I definitely want the city of Mesa here because they call themselves the gateway, <laughs> and we should have something that says the real <laughs> gateway to the superstitions. I, I like to refer to us as the backyard of the superstitions. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that works. They can be the gateway. We're the backyard. Yeah. So I, I would honestly say we're the home. Right, yeah, <laughs> if, they're the, if they're the gateway. Uh, all right, any additional comments or logo five? Mm -hmm. Logo five it is. Five. Let's just take a look. Mm -hmm. Can we flip back to the previous one? Just to, mm -hmm. I'm curious if it's the same photo of the mountain or if it's a different I noticed photo. that this morning it is the same photo. It is the same. Mm -hmm. Does this look better or does this look better? Okay, yeah. but they're inverted. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I don't. They're they're not actually inverted. I think it's just no, it's similar. it's blown well, up a little bit and the the color variation as opposed to well, for example, oh. on this one you have like notice the kind of bat. Oh, it shapes might not be the same in no. the middle. No. Well, it's black. Well, when you go to the previous one, it's white. Mm -hmm. Well, that's yeah. that's the reverse. shadow. In right, but I'm curious if it's the same photo, just yes. having the black and white reversed, yeah. or if it's yeah. two different photos. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, it might be, yeah. The oh, same yeah, with black and white reversed. Yep. It's, just been it's the color is reversed, so yes, it is the same. The other. Yep. She's just an established. You all really are artists. <laughs> well, if I could make a comment about this, this is actually my favorite of all of them. I love this. I just, I just love that you see the rays, you know, the Arizona flag reflected in the 100. Um, in our packets, if you look, you can see it just um, replicated in, in black and white, so you can see how it shows in black and white. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be misled by just looking at it in color when the other ones were all black and white. And I think it, it just reproduces beautifully. I really like it. Um, the only criticism I would have with this one, I love, again, we have that centennial and that beautiful, that beautiful typeface. Um, I would like to see, I mean, it says established 1922, celebrate. That needs to be a little bit bolder if it's going to be 
reproduced on a lot of things, especially if it gets a little smaller. And I did like the idea on the last one that it had 1922, 2022. I just think that needs yeah. to be emphasized. Other than that, I really like this one. You could take established off and just put 1922. And, mm -hmm. and if I, I may, like that, that is where we kind of, as the commission started talking and really getting into the discussion of how we change the artist design, mm -hmm. um, because some of them, when we were looking at them, actually did not even have the date on it. If, if you go back and mm. uh, this one has, oh. uh, like this one, for instance, doesn't have the date on it. Um, so oh. adding it so that it does not uh, uh, damage the the artist rendering you know adding it on the side or up top or on the bottom so that there may be more to the logo that we add in so that we can encompass those pieces mm -hmm. um, and then that's a part of the discussion as well because I believe even oh no this one has it um, so the ones that don't have it like this one uh, there was some discussion about like you had just mentioned like bolding the established mm -hmm. 1922 and then maybe on the other side you have you know 2022 or mm -hmm. something along that line um, again that's kind of back going back to the artists and saying hey it's not a major change can you add yeah. this in somewhere mm -hmm. um, and hope that they do if not then it's something that we would look in at adding on the side if if we were going to be if we're focusing on selling merchandise, which I think is going to be important. I mean, everybody wants to make money. Um, I think this one's a winner because I think if you have people from out of state, mm -hmm. they're going to see that Arizona flag on there, and that's going to make mm -hmm. them want it because it's got the Arizona flag. Commissioner Clay, or I'm agreeing with everything she says. This has all the elements now that we've been talking about, um, and like in. But I wanted clarification. So, like before, when we were talking about whether it should say Centennial or Founders Day, if they left their logo alone, you can still put Founders Day down in there somewhere Correct. else mm -hmm. to incorporate that element. If Correct, you and and that without compromising their her. The Correct. If we left this logo a hundred percent the way it was, if this was the winning logo, we could add Founders Day. And I mean, obviously, it will be branded throughout the year, so I think mm -hmm. people will naturally associate this logo to the founding centennial and, and things. I think there's some clever marketing ways and luckily Heidi's a genius at marketing, so yeah. we're tasking her with that. She's good. Yeah, but no, if we went down the list of everything that we've talked about now on each of the logos, it has more than one font, a sophisticated and yet a, you know, a non serify straight, easy to read. We've got that hundred out there. We've got representation of the Arizona with some bright color. But we really have our mountain, which it, it, in all the branding thing that I've heard around the community, the all different people that are working towards this, it's our mountain. Everybody's got the flag. We all share the flag, but only we are at the foot of that mountain. Um, so yeah, I, mm. your observations are spot <coughs> on. I want to. OK. Any additional comments? Uh, I'd like to have four. I definitely find this one probably also to be the best one because all one we have the color two as i'm looking at this like if we look at this one and the last one this one we could put on a white t-shirt and it'll work the last one we put it on a black t-shirt where's the hundred so this one it'll work in grayscale it'll work in color it'll work on white it'll work on black well oh. maybe not black well you can put an underlying no, no, white black. underneath the mm -hmm. um, mountain enough that it can and on the words as well I mean, I mean it's the word like the words underneath you can turn them to white mm -hmm. and you put a white you print white first and then the black mountain over it and then the words could be white and the color could be the color and it could be printed on a black thing <laughs> yeah around it mm -hmm. so yeah out of all of them like the attention to detail is probably the best it's I honestly feel it's the strongest one that with the least amount of flaws you could make glasses, but it really has don't. it really has potential. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that maybe you could bring that darkest blue down into some of the letters, like Centennial, as long as it's really dark and really bold. Mm -hmm. And you could get color at the top yes. and color at the bottom too. That's not essential, but that might be something that we think right. about. So uh, I think we've reviewed all the, that's the five options we have <coughs> at this point. There they are again. Yeah, yeah it's easy choice. Oh, there we go. 
so do we have a, I think if there's one that sticks out clearly in your mind for, um, for approval, uh, we, is there a motion to select a winner? I move that we select the 100 with the Arizona flag and celebrate Centennial. The upper left-hand corner here, Well, correct? that's an easy oh, way to fine. say it. Oh, <laughs> 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 Just want to make sure yeah, yeah. we're clear. <laughs> so just we, for clarification's sake, you're, just, you're saying- Logo five. five. Oh, yeah. Okay. I second the motion. All right, roll call. Okay. Commissioner Nicholas? Yes. Vice Chair Steinberger? Yes. Chairman Byes? Yes. Commissioner Coe? Yes. Commissioner Ham? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Commissioner Clett? Yes. Okay. Yay. Logo number five. <laughs> Thank you all so awesome. much. And now that this is done and you're no longer conflicted out, I look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. <laughs> It would Thank be great to have all of your input. All you're doing, that's really great. <laughs> well, get our email addresses and send us an announcement. We'll okay. be glad to come. Wonderful. I will send that actually to uh, Heather and have Heather send yeah, that out to each one of you. Heather, a Mr. little Chairman, more can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Yeah, so on Logo 5, you talked about adding with perhaps the, you know, the uh, 2022 on there and stuff like that. Personally, I like it the way it is, okay, um, just because it's simpler. Okay, and I don't know if we have to discuss that or if that's something that you guys decide, but how is it that you want to treat, because you talked about perhaps mm -hmm. approaching them. Um, is that something that we have to discuss? Is it something you have to discuss? What, what's, so, what's the next step? So, the ne <laughs> yes, so the, the next steps actually at this point, uh, and, and I apologize for not covering that, um, outside of tonight, and of course we'll post it on our, on our social media pages and both yep. newspapers are right. interested in covering the winner on this as well. Yep. Um, but the winner is actually going to be formally announced to the community at the upcoming Lost Dutchman Days. Um, and uh, we are going to reach out to them hopefully sometime this week um, well, Heidi will reach out to them because I don't know who they are. Um, but uh, we will reach out to them, and uh, the goal is to actually have, uh, we're inviting them to uh, be in the Lost Touchman Days Parade um, as a, a free float entry, and then our goal is to put this on banners and roll that out for the parade. Nice. Um, so I think if, if we have that opportunity and we can get it done in time, we also have to worry about print time. Um, we have, a, a, I, I, for those of you who watch Parks and Rec, I'm a big Leslie Note fan, and I feel like I have like a, 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 a print company on standby right now because they're like ready to print this as soon as we're giving it to them. So um, that's coming down the pipeline. So that might be a quick change that we can we can make or not make. Um, there's a, a like three to four of us that are actually going to work with the artist on that specifically. So question: Is this going to be big on a T-shirt? Or little on the T-shirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think yeah. from this point, it, the, yeah. the the intention on the back of the T-shirts is to list all of our sponsors and things throughout the year so that in 2022, that when we have these shirts, okay. that they'll all be listed. So I'm sure it will be varied sizes on T-shirts and, and the options of, you know, a polo or, you know, we haven't quite gotten there yet. If you would like to head up the t-shirt committee, we're all for it. <laughs> <laughs> Signing you guys up for things. There you go. So yeah. thank you all so much for your work tonight. Oh, Thanks. Thank you. thank you, Braden. Thank you. thank you. It was great to be a part thank of you. it. And congratulations, guys, on uh, selecting a first piece of art. There you go. <laughs> Our first decision. Yeah. We're grown-ups now. We great. did it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Um, I think that's why we all signed up for the commission here to have that experience. So. And then we yeah. can't complain when we see oh. the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fun. So the next item on the agenda is information reports. Um, I'll just, I think this is a new agenda item. So just mm -hmm. so everyone, just so it's clear, the chair at this same time may announce information regarding activities involving public art matters such as but not limited to attendance of commission members at community meetings or events, seminars or conferences or upcoming events or conferences. So um, I believe we have one item underneath this heading this week, uh, but just wanted to make sure that we were kind of aware of this. Um, if 
I mean, it's, it says the, uh, the, the chair at this time, but I assume that's also relates to all the commissioners up here, right? So. Absolutely, yes. Yes, so, so if you do attend a conference or attend someplace, art, see a piece of art, absolutely. You just send me an email with the information. So, um, Chairman Buys <laughs> found these um, in Bisbee. So, did you want to talk? Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, yeah, I can. So, I thought these were especially appropriate mm -hmm. given uh, the marathon that's coming through town soon so I, I participated in the bisbee 1000 in october which mm -hmm. is a thousand stair climb in bisbee arizona down in southern arizona and you're running through their historic downtown up all the old um, wpa staircases and as you're going through you know they have examples of murals so i snap the the blurriness is because i was slowly running by uh, <laughs> but uh so i just thought this was a good example of um, integrating public art into a city, but then also how the experience of, or the experience of viewing the art during an event is uh, especially apropos. Is this the one on the left? Is that a bas relief, or is it? No, it's an painting. illusion. It's, it's an just, illusion. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it looks like it's jumping out at you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I like relief. that illusion. Yeah. Pretty used to, to that. think of that. that. Okay. I love that comment, and also because that's what I hope that we can get from this, from viewing other examples of public art, is okay. thoughts and think, you know, some comments well, that we can generate, so we're better prepared to discuss when we. How, how did see you? In our own city. Did you just take this on your camera? Mm -hmm. Just on my then, phone. And then sent sent it to Heather, or yep. because I've been going all over seeing public art, mm -hmm. but. Um, you know, I was in Wickenburg and Thanks some place, sure. you know, <laughs> they all have it. And they all have cowboys rearing up, so that's <laughs> out. I have some photos that's like out, that. Yeah. Well, but <laughs> it's redundant. We've saturated uh, that in. But I think it's, you know, it, it's important yeah. to develop, uh, develop a dialogue about okay. these things. So even if it's something that maybe it, you're not particularly fond of, it may be a good huh. topic of, a brief discussion. Well, speaking of things I'm fond of, I want that lost Dutchman in front of this building on uh, Highway 88 at the roundabout. <laughs> Wouldn't that be perfect? So you want to take it from there? A donkey. Yeah. <laughs> and a donkey. I mean, nobody sees it unless you come here for business. You know, I mean... Matter for consideration. I, I noticed guess. the well, lawyers. <laughs> I think, I think for, you might have to argue with the DOT on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> because of visibility and sight lines and all that. Well, and I think that when the time comes to have that discussion about the roundabout, that you know those sorts of practical matters will be a consideration for sure. Well, I'll tell but. you right now, Wickenburg has a huge rearing cowboy on their roundabout mm -hmm. coming into town. And I'm sure that was an ADOT experience. Mm -hmm. So they got it. So we should be able to. There's definitely examples of art within roundabouts. There's one in northern Arizona of a big uh, spur as well yeah. that I noticed. Mm -hmm. I have a photo but the, the thing is, is 60 is an, you know, that's an ADOT problem too. And mm -hmm. ours is an ADOT problem. And they have a big rearing horse. So we could have. You know, we can still do it. Okay. <laughs> well, those things cross my mind. There was my one little pumpkin. I don't think was an ADOT. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> a cute little pumpkin. I don't think that's ADOT. <laughs> there was one other thing that was shared, and this is called Wonder Space. Yeah. It's it's actually an 11 minute long yeah, video, so I don't think that we're going to play it this evening. Um, but I can send an email. But essentially, it's just, um, I think it was just uh, an idea of using some commercial space, vacant or unused space. Yeah, did you want to? If you want to pull up the website, there's <laughs> That's better. there. Yeah. And I did send this to everybody on the committee. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. okay. Um, so you can go look at it. It okay, is the okay. first video. The, in the video, it's the first one that comes up, and it's 11 minutes in. But this is up in Scottsdale, and um, ironically, it came up on this show, the 48, 
Um, <clears throat> and I've been, we, I've been discussing, I'd noticed that the kids were polled at oh. the high school and one of the things that, they had a lot of things in alignment with the vision that a Apache Junction has for themselves, but one of the things they were looking for was some spaces that they could go to. Mm -hmm. And a space, these, we're, we have to think about our weather. There's so many of these weird defunct open spaces, empty mall things, empty, it, and we're talking about people who are doing development. So what wonderful place then to put interactive indoor spaces that are environmentally friendly for us to go in and hang out and be cool or on a rainy day or have a place that is safe where kids can't get into trouble but could really get into other cool things and interact. So that really appealed to me. Yeah, I was very impressed with it, I have to say. This, this is a minute 30 long video. Do you want me to play it? Sure. Yeah. Okay. If other people don't mind. Yeah. Uh, in Clark. a nutshell, they took an old theater in Scottsdale, sectioned off the individual theater rooms, and have different artists that come in. Um, they change. It's affordable. That was one of the other things that I liked was I think it's only 20 bucks to get in for an adult and 15 for kids and seniors. There was all kinds of discounts. Um, they also generate revenue from the tickets to help maintain it and to you know, keep rotating these artists and help pay for it. So again, any of these defunct kind of spaces uh, are ripe for it. And a lot of people, it's trending across the US. So. Mm -hmm. Well, if anyone experiences it, since it's right down the road, I'd be yeah. curious to hear your, the what? if you experience it, just because it's right down the road here in Scottsdale, I'd be curious to hear first-hand impressions. Yeah, Sounds I like a neat space. Because I just saw it on the show, and I was like, this is exactly what I was going to bring up at the meeting. And so it showed, I didn't even know it was here in Scottsdale. I just knew that this was trending in other countries and things I had seen stuff. Mm. Um, and wouldn't that be sweet for little old AJ mm. to be, you know, right on the edge of a cool trend? Mm. Yes. May, have the, may I have the floor? Um, I think this is kind of out of our realm as a uh, committee, but I like the idea. There's actually one in Santa Fe, and I contacted the company today after your, and I believe it's called Meow Wolf. I'm not sure yeah. of the name, mm -hmm. but what I liked about it is it's interactive. It's performing yeah. arts. It's all of that, yeah. and um, so I understand that they were looking at a place in Phoenix, and I kind of called them and said, well, what about Apache Junction? So I haven't heard back from them, but They're something like that with, which is this is more commercial as yeah, well. And yeah. so it's kind of out of our realm, I think, as a committee. But I like the idea. But we right. could adopt it to mm -hmm. something maybe on a smaller scale. Absolutely, or, interactive. You know, or like you said, interaction, something that changed. Mm -hmm. uh, my idea was that if snowbirds were coming back every year, they're looking forward to maybe might change twice while they're here mm -hmm. so that you get them to go twice as opposed to mm -hmm. just one, you know, those kind of things. Commissioner Hamm. Um, 
what I was going to say is one of the big benefits of th something like this is the city has many buildings that look beautiful on the outside that are starting to become uh, un uninhabited, I've noticed. And something like this could really bring life back to those buildings and give them, mm -hmm. you know, keep them around and give them a use instead of a developer coming in and just saying, well, mm -hmm. we want to put in, <coughs> and we want to build it, put in a whole new business, and we want to take out this beautiful piece of mm -hmm. architecture. And I think well, the charter of, the, of this commission is to activate some of those spaces for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I do, can you clarify, Heather? I believe though what is, in our charter, it has to be a permanent installation, though, not a temporary installation? Uh, correct, as far as, sorry, what's in the ordinance, yes. Okay. Um, but there's nothing that says that you can't do something like this. Your main focus is intended for that permanent type of, of art. But, you know, it, you're, you're advocating for projects like this. There's nothing wrong with that, absolutely. It could be a, a permanent residence where the things changed or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It, would it question you guys if an old building that was kind of like you said, nice on the outside but funky on the inside, we went and we did this, clean, cleaned up, would that make that building more appealing for another business? Like we're going to do the art thing in there for one year. Um, and then it's going to be available for sale. Would that help that building be resold? That would be appealing to a commercial. Is that something we even care I about? Be out of my scope. Yeah. <laughs> Does that help our city? I, don't, I, don't I think I, it, it would help the potentially help the scope. city. Uh, yeah. But um, mm -hmm. interesting idea for sure. Mm -hmm. It'd be a very good idea. It'd be. And in, in these, they have professional artists doing the work. Right. If somehow we could engage the students who do it, it'd be mm -hmm. number one, a lot cheaper. Sure. <laughs> and we wouldn't have to charge $20 to get in. Um, or even local universities or something like that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Get um, work study students at ASU. I've done that. So basically, it's got some potential, but we'd have to probably narrow down and put some limitations and we'll things like that. But we all yeah. like the idea yeah. of the yeah. interactive changing indoor. OK, cool. Thank you. OK, I have one last question. That the development that's going in on Goldfield, oh. are they going to give us money? and do art in front of it? My I mean, understanding is that residential developments are exempt from yeah. the, the percentage that goes towards public you art. Be. <laughs> it, from my understanding, it has to be like an apartment complex that yeah. uh, in order for it to be uh, fun, for us to get funding from that kind of, from that kind of residential but development. Multifamily. Yeah. So it's, like a neighbor, new neighborhood doesn't count, but an apartment complex does. So if I, I could add a little something to that, that is all factual. However, our planning and zoning um, division who works with developers such as that, they do um, encourage and, and ask yeah. for aesthetically pleasing things. Um, like you know, we, we do encourage and would like to see them install art, but like the fencing or or a fountain or something like that. That's all stuff that we, we try and seek them to, to include. I know during our last uh, meeting, we mentioned collaboration between different committees and departments. Mm -hmm. um, if, the, if there was a desire on behalf of the developer to install, for example, something at the front of the subdivision that was um, something to attract folks in, would planning and develop, I guess it's more of an invitation to planning and development if they wanted our participation Absolutely. Uh, to weigh in or give, give thoughts on um, yes. what was being submitted, but not a mandate by any, by any means. I think it'd be nice more if they came the and visited. Mr. Chair, 
Yes, sir. The commission may do that. And I hate <coughs> to tell you this. I really hate to tell you this, but you're off the agenda. Yeah. yeah. This item is not on the agenda. So very true. If you want to talk uh, about it? At a, <laughs> you could go to the next number eleven. The number eleven, and you could direct staff to put this on the agenda. <clears throat> okay. Excellent. All right. So call for future agenda items. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for steering us into steady waters, uh, Mr. Stern. And invite those developers to this meeting so we can talk to them. Um, Go get them. Well, we're on number 10, is that correct? Number 10, director's report. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, we don't. We development don't have service any. directors, members of city staff, individuals designated to manager. I don't believe we have any items underneath no. the heading. No. Okay. And... Uh, Call for future agenda items, um, which I which is where uh, we would place a future agenda item as an invitation, I guess, to the planning and development committee if there was any uh, desire on their behalf to. Um, I, I'm not sure how that would how that process would work, but invite us to the meeting to weigh in, or if they wanted to pres make a presentation here on something under their review. Okay. And at one point you could have a joint meeting if you so requested. Um, they don't have to say yes. You could say we just want one and um, the director or actually it'd probably be Rudy or Larry that would ask them do you want to have a, a joint meeting? Okay. And then what, the, what would the subjects be? What would the potential um, agenda be? Because it should be more than one thing. <laughs> right. I would oh. think. Mm -hmm. Do we do we have a timeline for, or is is there a schedule for review? Do we know on that specific subdivision that's with planning and zoning? Is it? Do we know what stage of the process it's in? Is it under review or? Uh, they've already. They're complete, talking about Goldview, right? Yeah. I believe there are um, the plats already been uh, accepted and yeah. the zoning's already done. Yep. It's already done. Have they? proceeded into permitting, building permitting? Uh, I don't think they have a permit yet. I don't know if they got one, but they are, they may have started some groundbreaking, so there might be some. Uh, They've done some clearing already. Yeah, some clearing. Yeah. Okay. But actual individual units, no, there's no permits that I know of. Okay, so time may be of the essence <laughs> if we would like to make the invitation to planning and development, especially in regards to their master planning efforts and focal pieces in the neighborhood and uh, visible from, I guess that's Apache Trail. No, uh, uh, Old, West Old, West Old West Highway. Old West and, and Goldfield. And Goldfield. Goldfield. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Great. Any additional future agenda items? All right. Uh, selection of meeting dates, times, location, and purpose. Um, we established during the last committee a recurring date of the second Monday of each month. Do we need a motion or anything to set that date, or is uh, there any can? We just need to, at the end of every meeting, just reaffirm that that is the next date. Excellent. So it, it, the motion does call for the specific date and time to be read. All right. With that, I move to have our next regular meeting at 6 p.m. on Monday, March 9th, in the City Council Chambers located at 300 East Superstition Boulevard, Apache Junction. Second. Okay. Chairman Byes? Yes. Commissioner Coe? Yes. Commissioner Ham? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Commissioner Klett? Yes. Commissioner Nicholas? Yes. Vice Chair Steinberger? Yes. Okay, motion passed. All right. And with that, we'll adjourn this meeting of the uh, Apache Junction uh, Public Arts Commission at 731 on February 10th. Thank you.